Okay, next section in chapter 5, over on page 74, he talks about the gift of marital procreativity. He says a man can be said to give his life for his family in many ways because in, the, in that verse, uh, St. Paul says, you know, love your wife as Christ loves the church, giving yourself completely, um, I'm paraphrasing, um, but gives his life in many ways. But the most basic way in which he gives his life to his family is by giving life to his family. Procreativity, as it was with the scepter of self-discipline, is the trait of marriage that is most essential in wielding the scepter of authority. It is the man's initiative act of procreation that actualizes the maternal vocation of his wife who is saved through childbearing. That phrase there is from the first letter of Tim Timothy saying the, the woman is saved through childbearing. No greater marvel can a man initiate in bringing new souls into existence. Do you ever stop and think about that's what's happening when we father a child? And we know that what he means by saying she's saved through childbearing, this is, goes back to Genesis, where our Lord, when uh, God the Father finding Adam and Eve in the garden after the fall, says you will have pains in childbirth. And this is going to be her participation in her redemption. And when we father a child, we are aiding in our wife actually going through that process, you know, of having those pains that are going to be a part of her redeeming. And so, um, but whenever she makes us a father by, um, by carrying that child, that isn't the thing that redeems us. What, what our participation is is by working by the sweat of our brow as God commanded us to. And that's not the wife's uh, job in that situation. That's not her participation in redemption. So we see that this goes beyond the mere natural. It goes beyond just these secular things that are happening. It becomes supernatural. It becomes sanctifying when we do these things. So if we look at, uh, let, let's go back to the text. He, he brings up some things to explain how profound it is for us to father children. Now, over in the Catechism of Trent, here's a quote. Fathers are, so to say, images of the immortal God. In them we behold a picture of our own existence. Them God made use of to infuse into us a soul and reason. By them we were led to the sacraments, instructed in our religion, schooled in right conduct and holiness, and trained in civil and human knowledge. Also, from one of the documents of Vatican II, Gaudium et Spes, he uses this quote, this passage, let all be convinced that human life and the duty of transmitting it are not limited to the horizons of this life only. Their true evaluation and full significance can be understood only in reference to man's eternal destiny. So again, not natural only, but we think of things uh, in terms of the eternal. 